After I posted this video a couple weeks back about how I've gotten over 150,000 streams on Spotify using Facebook ads, I got a lot of interest of people wanting me to make a more in-depth video. So in this video, I'm going to show you an ongoing campaign that I've been running with my most recent release, Satellite, and include the budgets and the results so far. So if you've never used Facebook ads before, this is kind of what it looks like. And we're gonna talk about the different steps when creating ads to run with your music. First off with these ads, you have to have some sort of video to promote. There's many ways to make these videos or you can also find some stock footage that's interesting and use that. So I'm gonna show you some examples of the videos that I created for this campaign specifically. So in my videos, I like to have some sort of caption that kind of engages people and brings them more into the video. So you saw them say waves of nostalgia will hit you if you listen to this song. Sometimes it's this song will make you feel like you're levitating or when the chorus hits, this song is a vibe. Captions that will basically make people curious like, oh, is this song going to make me feel this way? That's kind of how I make my videos a little more engaging. You also should have saw that I use different parts of the songs mixed with different captions captions in different videos. So I made a ton of variations and I'm basically seeing which parts of the songs work best with the different videos and captions. I can't stress it enough that your video has to be engaging for the audience that you want to target. Generally pictures of the album artwork with the song playing behind it aren't gonna perform well just because those aren't super engaging and they're kind of generic to, to people who are used to seeing ads. Once you have your video, you are one step closer to starting to run Facebook ads. So with these music ads, we are trying to get people to perform a specific action by clicking on a link that we provide. I'd advise having a landing page and not just sending people directly to Spotify. So here's an example of a landing page. Um, it's my song. It has the direct link to Spotify on it. I use a company called Hyped It and it works really well for me. So when every time somebody enters this link and clicks play, it takes them to Spotify and that's what counts as a conversion on Facebook. So every time someone clicks on your link, Meta tracks it and it optimizes the money you're spending to essentially push your video out to people who are more likely to click it. Side note, if you want a part two on this video on how to set up a hyped it page and how to connect everything to let Meta track your data on this landing page with something called a Facebook pixel, let me know down in the comments and I'll make that video happen. So. We have our landing page and we have our videos. Now let's get into creating a campaign. So we'll hit create. Uh, and this is basically the campaign you're choosing. I would always choose objective campaign because you want it to be good for conversions. So you're gonna hit continue. This is where you would name your campaign. This one I just called satellite campaign number one. I wouldn't choose any of these categories. It's always gonna be an auction buying type and you have your campaign objective. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on this advantage campaign budget. So that's basically gonna let you set your daily budget. So for most of my campaigns, my overall budget is somewhere around three to $400. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with $20 a day. And that's basically it for the general campaign. After we create a campaign, the real work lies within the ad sets. So I'm gonna hit next and you're gonna see that it says new ad set, new engagement ad set. So ad sets are basically where you designate your target audience. And the more effort you put into these ad sets, the better results you're likely to have with your campaign. For each ad set, I'm putting in specific parameters of who I want Facebook to show the ad to. And these parameters have to do with things like age, countries, interests, and so forth. So since this is a conversion campaign, I'm gonna make sure that um, I hit website. And I'm going to select the pixel, which is for what event I want Facebook to track. 
So in this case, I want them to track this Spotify conversion, which is when they click this play button on the landing page. After that, I'm gonna scroll down. I'm gonna start the budget and schedule right away. And then this is the meat and potatoes of the ad set is this here. So if we go back to my ad sets for satellite, I'm gonna show you some of the different ad sets that I've been running. So just as a preface, I have six different ad sets running for this campaign. Every single target audience that I am telling Facebook to send this ad to, I make sure that they're interested in Spotify. So down here, when it asked me to make my ad set, you can see that one of the very first things that I make sure is that it matches with people who are interested in Spotify. Typically for my genre of music, I am targeting younger people. As you can see, the age is anywhere from 18 to 38. The variations in the ad sets are in the different countries that I am targeting, different moods and genres, as well as artists who vaguely resemble the style of the song that I'm trying to promote. In this case, I am targeting tier two countries, which is countries that are a little less expensive to market to, age 18 to 38, people who are interested in Spotify, and also must match one of these artists. Whenever you are creating your audience, just know that not every artist is gonna show up on who they let you target. It's usually just the biggest artist. So just think of your music very broadly. I would consider Satellite to be an indie pop song. So I was thinking of some like retro artists who are kind of in that indie vein. The 1975, The Weeknd, Miley Cyrus with her new records. Artists like that who vaguely resemble the song. So it doesn't have to be a perfect match. Different artists and genres are gonna work better than others. And it's just kind of seeing which ones work best and putting more more money towards those ads. As I mentioned earlier, I generally split my audience into targeting tier one countries and tier two countries. Tier two countries are some of these countries, and I'll go ahead and leave this up for a second so you can screenshot it, um, that are generally cheaper to target. A lot of times Facebook will end up pushing more of your money towards these countries just because tier one countries are generally more expensive to market in. So the cost per conversion is going to be a little higher than these tier two countries. Here's the list of the tier one countries that I use. The only countries that I make sure not to target are Brazil and India. A lot of times they will eat up your campaign budget and I found that you might get really cheap cost per conversions, but they don't necessarily turn into fans who listen to your music over and over again. So the ad sets that I have for this song Satellite that I'm marketing right now, it's kind of three split into tier one and tier two. I have tier one and tier two, which are basically just matched to Spotify. So I don't put any additional artists or genres that Facebook needs to match with these people. Sometimes just Spotify will work very well for you. Sometimes it won't work well. The next ad set I have is those artists that I mentioned earlier. And then I also made sure that they match Spotify. And as you can see, I have it divided into both tier one and tier two. And then I targeted indie rock, indie pop, and just the indie music scene. So once I have nailed down my target audience, I go down here to placements. I would never recommend doing these advantage placements. I would highly recommend just choosing your manual placements and kind of picking the ones that you want Meta to show your ads in. I have Meta show my ads in Facebook feed, Instagram feed, profile feed, Instagram explore stories as well as reels. I don't use any of these other ones because a lot of times when people are on these specific places like Facebook Marketplace, Instagram Shop, they're not looking to discover new music. They're there usually for a purpose. So you gotta be really strategic with which placements you choose. So if you wanna screenshot these that I use, I think these are the most basic ones. If you see any that Instagram has chosen for you, just uncheck them. You don't want Facebook in-stream videos or Facebook search results like you're just not gonna get quality conversions if you're showing your ads in these places so once I have all these different ad sets I basically take every single video that I made and I load it into each ad set you can see that this is an ad set and these are all the different videos that I have running in that ad set I have verse 1 the sunset video and this caption I have the chorus 
with this video and this caption. So as you can see, I made a lot of videos. I'm using different parts of the songs, various captions, and various videos. Let me show you what an individual ad looks like. I have the ad name. So this is the sunset video with verse one of the song, as well as the caption that talks about being torn about someone that you love. I've attached my Facebook and Instagram. This is where you upload your video. So you would upload it down here where it says media. I don't include any of this primary text. I will always change this to listen now. The default is learn more. Just change that to listen now to make sure people know that it's a song. This is where you put the website URL of the landing page that you want people to go to. This URL of this landing page, I will always put there. And that's how you let Facebook know what to track as a conversion. Make sure you have your pixel set up here and that's kind of a general run through of how to create a new campaign with some different ad sets and putting your different ads in the video. So now I've published my campaign, but the work doesn't stop there. Once all of your ads have been published, Throughout the campaign, I'm checking which ads are performing well, meaning that the cost per result is very low versus which ads aren't doing so well where the cost per result is high. Whenever an ad has a very high cost per result, I will usually turn it off. If we go to the satellite campaign and we go into the ad sets, let's take this ad, for example, the indie rock pop music scene to the tier two countries. So I click on that and I look at these ads and I see, for example, that this ad Facebook has spent around $2.22 on it and it's gotten four conversions. But that's about 56 cents per conversion. That's a super high conversion rate. So I went ahead and turned it off. Here's another one. Facebook spent about $1.50 on it and it only got two conversions. And I obviously want to turn that off. But something like this where Facebook has only spent 66 cents on it and it's gotten three conversions. So the cost per conversion is 22 cents. I'm going to keep an ad like that on. There is a learning phase to meta finding out which audience to show your ad ads to. So don't be shocked if in the first couple of days of your first campaign, your cost per conversion is a lot higher than 20, 30 cents. My cost per conversion for this entire ad campaign has been about 25 cents per conversion with about 1,267 Spotify conversions. However, Meta does miss some conversions. People who have iOS 14 and who have opted out of tracking, Meta can no longer track what websites and buttons they're clicking. So those conversions aren't gonna show up. Generally, I like to assume that whatever ads are doing the best, those are the ads that are missing conversions. That is another reason why I recommend a landing page like this one because hyped it also tracks the number of link clicks that that one Spotify button is getting. In total, I've gotten 1,396 link clicks versus the 1,267 that Meta has reported. That means my cost per conversion is closer to 22 or 23 cents per conversion than the 25 that is reported in Meta. So that's something to note. Now let's look at my results in Spotify. We've gotten a total of 6,000 576 streams, 1,500 listeners. Each listener is listening to the song over four times, which is just insane. We've gotten over 1,100 saves and 517 playlist ads. And just remember, this is only the start of the streams. I'm trying to build enough traction within these ads in the first month that Spotify is going to push this song out to Discover Weekly, Spotify Radio, and Release Radar. And that's when the streams really start compounding. I'll make a video later in the future with the results of this campaign. Maybe in a couple months, once those algorithmic playlists have started pushing this song out. So that's a basic rundown on how I run meta ads to grow my audience on Spotify. It can be a lot of work up front, but it is so much more of a cost effective way to get your music out there to people who will actually enjoy it, save it, and become real fans. A lot of times getting added to playlists, whether it be editorial playlists or playlists on Submit Hub, a lot of people are passively listening to those playlists and they're not gonna become active fans. And that's why I love Facebook ads. If this video is helpful for you and you want to see a full video on how to create a Facebook pixel and attach it to your website and get a hyped it landing page, 
please let me know again down in the comments. I wouldn't recommend running these ads until you have all of that set up because you're not gonna get super accurate numbers. Don't just take what you learned today and start running these ads. I think there's definitely a little more work on the back end that you're gonna have to do. Thanks again for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm gonna be posting a lot more content like this as well as my own music. Go ahead and subscribe to follow along the journey and listen to satellite. Thanks.